This three-year-old girl just arrived in this hospital. Her mother was killed during an attack on their village. Imebet found her among dead bodies. There were so many corpses everywhere that it was impossible to get through. The child's jaw was severely injured. They first fired with heavy weaponry, then many soldiers arrived. They killed anyone in sight, regardless of age. I picked up the baby and ran away. Like her, hundreds of civilian victims arrived in Michele's hospital during the past months. Most of them, initially it was blasting green. After a few days, they come, most of them they come with blasting just. This doctor works around the clock with limited means. The first time in, our, in my career, yes, facing with such difficulties, but together with our teams, we are trying to handle that. But the difficulties, uh, you know, the light is off, switch it off. And uh, we are facing with medical equipment shortage. The conflict has spread throughout the entire Tigray region. It started in November after the Tigray People's Liberation Front, the TPLF, attacked Ethiopia's National Army's northern command in the region. Eritrean troops then entered Tigray to fight alongside the Ethiopian army. Witnesses say soldiers and militias target civilians and use rape as a weapon of war. Mulu was raped by Ethiopian soldiers at the end of February while guarding her shop. She came to this medical center. It was six in the evening. It was dark. Because of their flashlights, I couldn't identify their faces. They hit my head and my body with whatever they had at hand. They were at least five. One of the men put his gun to my neck. I fell down and he raped me. This center has received over 130 victims since the conflict began. Here they can make a deposition and receive medical help. Mulu's ex-husband Gebre Sesai is in touch with the doctors to keep track of her health. She's now hiding in a safe house for fear of reprisal. He sleeps in one of the ten schools turned into a camp for displaced people. Here, living conditions are particularly dire. This is the water we drink. As you can see, it's dirty. Across Tigray, more than half a million people were forced to flee their homes. Thousands of them were able to find refuge in the regional capital, Mekele. Here, we don't have enough water, food, nor clothes. We're not receiving any help from the government. Classrooms are being used as dormitories or makeshift canteens. Like everyone here, this man has witnessed the horrors of the conflict. He says Eritrean soldiers held him captive in a church. I've lived under four governments, from Haile Selassie up to the present day. Before war broke out, peasants were asked to leave. Nowadays, they're targeted and killed. Churches are no longer sanctuaries. Civilians are dragged out and killed. Like this priest, many survivors speak of massacres and accuse Eritrean soldiers. Human rights organizations have also blamed Asmara, but the acting president for the Tigray region says it's the TPLF who's responsible for the current insecurity. There is a legion and confusion in the people of Tigray because of different fake news. The reality is the, the peace of the people is, I think, disturbed because of the TPLF region, because they attack the National Defense Force in the region, which was guarding the people. What the interim administration is doing is to save the life of people, to restore security and stability. We meet Gebre Sesai in his village, a two hours drive north from Mekele. Residents say more than 150 people were killed by members of the Eritrean army during a religious celebration. After hearing the first gunshots, we ran away by the riverside. The gunshots continued. We followed the river and hid in a cave nearby. When the soldiers saw there was no military response, two of them entered that house and killed two people. 
My brother and my cousins, their parents were imploring the soldiers, please, in the name of the Virgin Mary. They only came here for the celebration. They begged, but were told to get lost. They kept begging. My brother and two of my cousins were killed before their parents' very eyes. Hundreds of people had come to the Mariam Dengelat church to attend mass. Those who were able to hide inside survived, but all have lost friends or relatives. I am very, very sad. All of those killed were like my own family. This man's sister was killed. This other man lost his brother. He lost his brothers as well. And him, his parents. All of these people are mourning, and not just them. All of the people of Tigray are in mourning. Survivors say mass graves are scattered throughout the village. A group describes how Eritrean soldiers forced them to dig the graves. The soldiers ordered us to bury them. There were six of us. And even if you saw the body of a family member, you were not allowed to cry. They warned us, if one of you cries, or if you try to bury them in the church graveyard, we will kill you as well. On March 23rd, after months of denial, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has finally admitted the presence of Eritrean troops in Tigray. He said those responsible for the atrocities will be punished, but despite these promises, violence against civilians continues, with thousands still trapped in the fighting.